If anybody has any further questions, uh, please email them. Uh, or, like I said before, you can contact your local urologist and see if uh, most uh, urologists, uh, there's a urologist in your area that is doing this type of procedure. Uh, you can also contact Tampa General if you need a referral, if you live in the local Tampa, greater Tampa Bay area. There is some questions about how effective is this long term. The data and the scientific data has shown this is very effective. Over five year data has been uh, actually obtained. The procedure has been done for over 10 years uh, and, and it is a very effective long term management of overactive bladder, frequency, urgency, as well as interestingly urinary retention. And often we forget about those people, patients who don't empty their bladder completely. Uh, it can be often uh, very difficult. They may have to intermittent cath. Uh, this can actually reduce the need or actually eliminate the need to have to catheterize. As he tries to actually place an S4, it, it can be sometimes challenging. It seems very uh, simple when you look from the opposite side. You can see the little holes here. These are the foramens that he's going to actually try to pass through. This is the S3 foramen. Here's the S4 foramen down here. You can see the nerve roots pass through that area. What he'll try to do is actually get the needle. I'll pass it from this side so it may be easier to see. But he's trying to get that to be right about there, coming through so it's right next to the nerve. We won't be this far in. It'll just be below the surface. There he's able to actually stimulate the nerve. There's a question here about uh, age. Uh, typically, you know, we see overactive bladder in, in uh, urinary retention in, in older patients, usually over 50, maybe in their 60s. However, there are patients in their 30s and 40s who are candidates. And even spina bifida patients, young patients, there is uh, data showing that it's effective in these patients. So you may want to, if you uh, have a child who has spina bifida or a, a young uh, person who's below the ages of 18, you, you can talk to your urologist. Often there's a pediatric urology specialist in your area. Often they are a little bit more equipped to manage ch children. However, uh, if you're over 18, you, you have these kind of symptoms that, that are profound and are concerning. I, uh, as I said earlier, it's important to see a urologist and get the evaluation started. He's the one who can only make the determination if you're a candidate uh, for at least uh, a trial at InterStim or some other therapy by, by evaluating your urinary function. And S4 is proving a bit elusive, so I don't know that I'm going to stick with the S3 that I have. I'm not able to get it on this side as I was on the, on the left. If anybody has any further questions, please email them. Uh, we'd be happy to answer any ongoing questions as we go along. Just to recap, uh, today we're actually placing a, a percutaneous needle, which means we're passing the needle into the skin, down through the S3 foramen, which allows us to stimulate the nerve root. Dr. Odorico will then pass this temporary lead, which is actually just passed down through the needle. And then he will actually remove the needle. And this temporary wire will then be taped and allow us to attach it to this box right here. This, this needle will attach to this box. And you are then able, when you go home, you'll have it turned on. There will be a stimulating volume here, and you have to change the volume just to where you just barely feel it. Uh, often patients will describe they feel it in their vagina or their rectum, depending on, on, on their sex. Uh, and then based on that, we just want just a slight tapping sensation, uh, and that's often where we get the best results. The key here is then you're going to keep a diary of, of, of how you do, uh, keeping track of your frequency, the amount you're voiding, and the episodes of incontinence. You then give that to your urologist. If he determines you're a candidate for the permanent, he will then put this permanent lead in, very similar. He'll pass the needle through, and instead of having this temporary lead, it will actually be this permanent lead, but it will be below the skin. It'll be attached to this little brain here, uh, which actually goes below the skin, pretty much in, if relative to the, to the needle uh, placement. It's over to the side on, on the buttocks. 
which allows you to control with your temper uh, your uh, vice here, which is wireless, which allows you to actually turn up and change the volume. Interestingly, if you go to an airport, uh, sometimes it can get shut off by the x-ray machine. So it's just important to have your device so you can turn it back on. The actual uh, airport machines will not damage it. It just sometimes temporarily shuts it off. Here again, if we look at the fluoroscopy, you can see the needle trying to get, get through the foramen. Okay. What I'm going to do at this point is I'm not able to get completely through the foramen. It's taken a course that I'm not quite comfortable with. So I think what we need to do is go ahead and... invest this patient's efforts into the S3 framing that we have because it feels like there's a blockage as I'm two-thirds of the way through. Okay, So I'm going to leave the S4 out of the equation and I'll be testing S3 on both sides. Now one caveat Now's the time to take your images and save them because when you take the patient back to, if they've had a successful test to actually put the device in place, you need some kind of roadmap to go back to. And we're going to develop that right now. So we have this image here. We had the AP image from before. And be sure to save that for when you come back. In the case of my practice, I'll also take that compound muscle action potential measurement and keep that with me too. Here I have this actual lead which is actually almost like a coiled spring and there's a mark on the side of it which tells me the depth at which it needs to go. Here we're looking at the fluoroscopy again. If you know in the fluoroscopy, he's passing the needle uh, down. Um, it's a very faint needle, but he has a marking on the wire where he can actually get to that level and then pull the uh, needle back and, and leave the percutaneous needle, uh, percutaneous lead in place. One thing you'll notice when you look at the fluoroscopy is that once this needle's out of place and the actual wire is there, it's almost imperceptible. That's why it's essential that we simply test it as is. We're going to just double check by testing this actual wire to see if we still get a response. And we do. Okay. So the patient's telling me he's feeling it in the rectum, which is the same when we had the needle in place. He's also showing us that we're seeing the levator or bellows contraction along with the toe response. And by the compound muscle action potential, we're seeing once again the toe in the upper tracing and the levator at the bottom tracing. I'm going to ask Chris to go ahead and turn that stimulus off. And I'm going to go ahead and pass a wire now through my other. Here again, while we're waiting, uh, there was another question about physical limitations. Like I said earlier, uh, the advantage of this, uh, all, all, once you get the permanent uh, implant, if you are a candidate, uh, there are very little uh, limitations as far as activity, so you can fulfill a, a normal life. The key here is hopefully we can limit your amount of urgent continence or, or frequency so you can recapture a, a higher quality of life. The uh, uh, options of avoiding every hour or two hours can be very limiting. And here we uh, ha have an opportunity to reverse uh, some of those severe symptoms. Right now, Dr. Odorica is uh, placing the uh, temporary wire, pulling the needle back. He will now test it to see what kind of stimulation he gets uh, on the opposite side. Now, we only need one of these to work. 
So if I get a response from here, it's kind of icing on the cake, but we'll see if we do get a response. And we are. We're actually getting a very good response in terms of our toe and in terms of our levator. And our patient is telling us that he feels it. Slight right side. So we can actually turn that up a bit. Make it a little bit stronger. Same place? Okay. So he's getting a good response. So we actually have success on both sides. So to place two of these wires is a, a complete test. We're able to test one side for a period of time and the other side for a period of time. Now what that period of time is varies on practice. I myself would do five days on each side or about 10 days total while they maintain a diary. There are others that may keep it in as short as just a few days. I'd like to make sure I get a fairly reproducible response with it. During that time, patients need to take it easy, basically. Any extreme uh, bending or exercise or exertion could displace these. And so we want them to take it easy during that time so that they can have it kind of set. Because these coils, so to speak, will set in place after a couple of days. It becomes a little bit more difficult for them to get dislodged accidentally. Afterwards, though, when we see them in the office, we're able to just remove this right there in the office. That's one of the benefits. The other way of doing this is what's called a staged method. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll talk more about that after I'm completed here. But via the staged method, we can actually put the lead that's meant to stay in place during the test phase. What it does commit us to, though, is a visit to the operating room to put that lead in and a visit to the operating room in order to take it out. Or hopefully, if the patient's had a successful test, we're putting the generator in at that time. If this works out well, then I can go ahead and put a lead and generator in in no less than two weeks. I want a little bit of time to go by to make sure I haven't introduced any bacteria into the site. Now, once you go home, like I said earlier, you're going to have this little brown box. There's also going to be a fairly large band-aid to hold these temporary leads down. You will be advised by the staff prior to leaving your limitations. One of the key questions is, can they shower or can you shower? And it is true, you can shower, but we prefer you to shower on the front and not let the water actually uh, hit directly onto the bandage. This limits a chance to, of dislocation or loss of the, band the actual bandages that hold on to your uh, lead. So it's a little bit of a commitment initially, but the patients who usually get this done and do well uh, uh, cannot wait to get their permanent implant because they can see such a dramatic response. This is one of those type of therapies that really is not of, of question. If you get a great response, uh, it, is, it is dramatic. So the key here is it may take a little time to get, um, uh, uh, as far as commitment, the first several days. But once uh, you move on to the permanent implant, if you're a candidate, uh, then you won't have the same limitations because the permanent one is put below the skin uh, and therefore uh, it, it has kind of external wire and, and you really have no, no major limitations. Now if we can kind of recoup as far as what we accomplished today, we we're able to test the S3 foramen on both sides. We we're able to go ahead and put a uh, temporary wire into each and get a response not only by the direct muscle response that we got, but also in terms of where the patient feels it, which is very important, and by the uh, compound muscle action potential. Now the true test begins in terms of the response that the patient has by maintaining a diary to see whether or not it results in success. And really what we're shooting for here is anything better than 50%. What that translates to is that if somebody has actual leakage, that we reduce that by half. If they actually have to catheterize in order to empty their bladder, that we're able to reduce that a significant amount so they don't have to use the catheter uh, quite as much. And this is the one therapy that I know of in which you can take a patient who has a bladder dysfunction and take it from retention where they have to catheterize versus being able to uh, go ahead and void on their own the way uh, we were all meant to.
So it's been a real breakthrough since its availability in the last 10 years.